I'm going to turn one page from Genesis 50 to Exodus chapter 1. Nothing happened. <laughs> but over 300 years passed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just that one page. <clears throat> My point being that most of life is ordinary things. Ninety percent of your life is, is going to be sleeping, cleaning the house, going to work or school, and just basic relationships in life. We have 50 chapters in Genesis and we have a lot that goes on there. Creation is a pretty big event. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The fall of man, the Tower of Babel, the flood, the story of Abraham, God promising him a child with Sarah. Twenty-four years later, nothing had happened. Twenty-four years later, he went about with his goats and herds and bears at home, upkeep of the tents. Problems in relationships with the slaves or whatever, and neighbors. That was his life. But the promise of God made that ordinary life thing worth it. He finally gave him Isaac. And then, not long after he gave him Isaac in his old age, he was, what, 100 years old? He told him to kill him. And then there's Isaac's story, and then there's Jacob and his 12 sons. All that in one book. And there are a lot of exciting stories, but how spread out are they? They're spread out maybe 35, 36 hundred years. Most, 90 plus, 95 percent of the time, it was brushing teeth, earning a living, cleaning the house taking care of the goats and all the rest. And that is your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus that makes it all worthwhile. And He's promised us a, a, a new earth where there's nothing but righteousness. Mm -hmm. No danger. This world is full of danger. Yes, yes. There are thousands of ways you can get hurt. Mm -hmm. Inside and out. But the promise of eternal life with peace and no pain, no hunger, no heat, cold, none of that, makes the ordinary life more than ordinary. Mm -hmm. Where you learn from Jesus how to treat others. You live, you live with integrity and thanks, thanksgiving. Yes. If you children want to be really show your parents how thankful you are, keep your room clean. Yes. Yeah. That's a way to show thanksgiving yes. for all you've been freely given. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was teaching homeschool with Elijah and Aaron and Josiah, we had a project, they may remember this, where they had a project for during the week somewhere somehow they would do a good deed for somebody without that person finding out about it. <laughs> you remember that? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And they did a pretty good job at it. They'd come back and give me their report at the end of the week. I did this or I did that. And they didn't know any they didn't know who did it or they didn't know <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> but righteousness makes life exciting. It helps you through challenging times. And it, I have heard, I've mentioned this before, over the decades, every once in a while you find a child of God so excited they go overboard. They start talking about they feel like God's going to use them in a mighty way. I've heard that 
a number of times. I've never seen God use a single one of them in a mighty way. Mm -hmm. Ever. They just over exuberant. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what I think is mighty. I think if you have a peaceful home, that's mighty. If you have a normal life, sensible, down to earth, rooted and grounded, and have good relationships, that is mighty. Yes, yes. A man, young man years ago was always getting miserable. He'd get this job and he'd get tired of it and go to a different career. Finally, he wanted to be a lawyer. Look, I, I told him in my office, I said, look, you seem to feed on a challenge. I want your challenge to have a peaceful, happy home in Jesus. Yes. Let that be your challenge. Yes. He failed miserably, but that would have made that would have been mighty yes. mild. Yes. 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 And if we have a group of people, whether it's a third this small or three times bigger that can get along yes. and love yes. one another yes. and help one another, be sensible yes. with each other. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great group of yes. people. Yes. I don't care if it's yes. five or six. Yes. 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 Amen. It takes the Holy Ghost to really make it work. Yes. So if you want to be mighty and you want God to use you in a mighty way, Keep your room clean. <laughs> do you do a good job at work, at school, wherever you are. Be a good neighbor, whether it's a sinner or a saint. Be sensible. It hit me one time as I was growing up in the Lord, going through some some things, that the deepest people I knew in the Lord were the most down to earth people, the most sensible. They didn't get off on tangents, wild tangents. and People who want to be spiritual get weird. Yeah. Who push themselves, trying to make themselves spiritual, mm -hmm. get weird. And I'm tired of weird. I don't, I've seen enough weird in my life, I don't ever want to see any more of it. We want to be down to earth, sensible, good people. Yes. Responsible people. Spoken, if we do that, if we do that, we walk in those things, Paul said, you, God will approve of you and men with good sense will approve of you too. Yes. Exactly. You'll be spoken well of by your bosses, fellow workers. You're sensible. And they can recognize that. And that's what I want. That's what God wants out of us. He also wants us to walk in. If we walk in the Spirit, that's how we live. That is being spiritual. That is walking in the Spirit. That's what it is. That's what it makes us. Holiness, true holiness, is not contrary to common sense and decency. Benjamin Franklin wasn't far off when he said cleanliness was next to godliness. That's not far off. The, from, that, that's not far from gospel. If we're going to be godly people, we're going to be clean people. Our homes are going to be clean. Our lives are going to be clean. Purging ourselves, Paul said, purifying ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Amen. That's, that's, that's holiness. Perfecting holiness that way. That's what he said. And that's how we do it. So let's make up our minds. We're just going to be sensible people. Now let me tell you something. It's sensible to raise your hands and thank God. That's sensible. That's sensible. If this was the same world, you'd see people at the gas pumps raising their hands for their gas and their money, gas and their tires and the, everything. That is sensible. That's holy. And it's right. You don't make a show of it. Jesus spoke against being religious for a show. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about from the heart. You'd see that everywhere you went. You'd, Jesus gives you something for everybody you meet. If it's nothing but a smile, nothing but a kind word, something yeah. will come from you to them and they'll feel it. So live. Live, 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 live. <laughs> Jesus gives us good sense. So let's use it. Amen.